So here's everything you're gonna need. You have some butter, some milk, eggs, your yeast, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, sugar, flour, and vanilla extract. It's a lot of stuff. I'm gonna make sure everything is listed for you. But as you can see, um, I did create these little pink tags so that you can see everything that I'm doing because it's a really like tedious process and I feel like explaining everything step by step is gonna get very boring. So right here, you're gonna be seeing me combine all of the dry ingredients. We're gonna mix that up into the flour just to make sure it's distributed evenly. And then now we're gonna add our sugars. Oh my gosh, I love adding brown sugar to any recipe. So make sure you do add some brown sugar. So I did use um, one cup of sugar and one half of brown sugar. Okay, and then once you have all of the dry ingredients mixed into the flour, you're going to make a well. And inside that well, we're going to be throwing all of our wet ingredients in. So boom. We have our milk, eggs. All right, so we're going to make sure that our two eggs are in there and we add one extra yolk from another egg. So then we're gonna add our melted butter and some vanilla extract. And that's the entire recipe for the dough. All you're gonna do is mix everything together and create like a little ball effect. And then once you have it, you are gonna cover it up and let it sit from one to two hours. If you have the full two hours, give it that much time. Okay guys, so now that our dough is set aside and covered, ready to rise, we are gonna start making this conchita paste. So all of the ingredients were listed, but it's basically powdered sugar, flour, and vegetable shortening. And I also added some butter to mine just because I like butter so much. <laughs> Anyways, you're just gonna mix it all together and you're gonna end up with like some Play-Doh consistency um, balls or dough. Um, so what you're gonna do is separate them depending on how many colors you're gonna make. I want four colors, so I decided to do pink, purple, and turquoise. And then I left some in the original ivory color. Uh, so yeah, I thought I was going to use my rolling pin, but it did not turn out good. But you do need some cookie cutters, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> so yeah, now we are ready to knead our dough. It has risen and doubled in size. So I wanted to show you guys this part right here. I put it into the mixer to knead, but I ended up taking it back out and kneading it by hand because I felt like it was taking too long and my dough was just a little bit too wet. Um, of course, you can add more flour at this moment. So if you're going to use a mixer and it looks wet like this, just add a little bit of uh, flour and it's going to start to come together. But I honestly wanted to do it by hand as well because I feel like most people are going to be doing it by hand so we're going to do it the regular way all right so i don't know what happened with that video cut there but yeah we're just going to knead it by hand and basically all you have to do is kind of grab from the center and rise it up to the top and bring it back to the middle i don't know if that makes sense but you're just going to stretch it and then fold into the ball I'm, I'm done explaining guys so after that you're just gonna oil a little bowl and you're gonna put the batter in there and it's pretty much done but I did let it sit for an extra 30 minutes and then I started to make my balls so you just make your little conchita buns it's very easy you know you can make them in whatever shape you like I had my son there visiting me for a second he likes to investigate everything I'm doing. And since this is pretty much like a sticky situation, he really didn't want, you know, to mess around too much with it. So he left. But anyways, um, yeah, you're just going to make your balls. And then now you're going to go ahead and make the little conchita paste on that goes on top. So this is how you get those pretty shapes and lines and the color that's on the conchita. So right now I'm just trying to figure out a good way to put them on to the concha. I've seen people have like these little uh, tortilla presser or tortilla press. 
and they pretty much use that but we don't have that so i'm trying to find a way that works so we use parchment paper and i pretty much just put it over the bun and peeled it back and it pretty much worked just just fine uh the purple color gave me a little bit of trouble and i feel like it's because i used a lot of uh food coloring so try not to use too much food coloring because it will change the consistency of it but it still worked out good i'm just letting you know so yeah i'm once again i'm just sampling it here i cut some pieces of parchment paper you can see my scissors back there and i'm pretty much just testing this method out to see if it's gonna work and oh my god i feel like i'm taking forever but i wanted to show you one of each color so i did the turquoise we're doing the ivory and i also noticed that um some people do a little bit of cinnamon on the ivory and it gives you like that brown sugar cinnamon vibe so if you want to add brown sugar to the ivory ones that will work really good and it will give you a little bit more flavor so yeah i figured this was gonna work so i did all of the colors put them on parchment paper flatten them out as much as i could without breaking them and like i said you see the purple one is giving me a little bit of trouble but that's because I used too much uh, food coloring once again. But now we're going to be moving on and we're going to start uh, putting the uh, sugar paste onto the bun. Okay, so this is our first official try. Let's see if it works. Yep, it worked. So you can easily uh, make a couple squares of parchment paper, flatten out your paste. And you can do this peeling method. If you find a different method, definitely let me know in the comments. So once you have your conchitas covered in the paste, then you're going to go ahead and make your patterns. So usually uh, the traditional style of conchitas that I've always seen have squares or like these lines. Kind of like these wavy lines. I don't know how to explain it. Anyways, I decided to make hearts because these are Valentine's Day conchitas. And I wanted to make them with y'all. This is also my first time making conchas. So if you guys have experience, definitely let me know if uh, if I did something wrong. Or if you have any suggestions on other flavors or varieties that I can make. I'm not really sure. Um, I do have to do a little bit more research to see uh, other types of recipes of conchitas. But for the most part, this is the most basic traditional style that I've seen. And something that was easy enough for me to do for the first time. I'm really not experienced in making uh, conchitas or bread in general. So, you know, I'm learning. Hello. That's why we're here. So, you know, this is my first time. I think you guys would do great too. So, because Valentine's Day is coming up, I decided to do the hearts. But you can definitely do the traditional style, which are like little diced squares and they also do like a curved line so i did try to do the curved lines and they came out pretty cute so just watch me do these we're almost done i'm gonna speed it up just a little bit okay so i used a couple of these circular uh cookie cutters and i tried to make that shell round vibe that i see on most conchitas and they came out super cute so now they're going to go in the oven, okay? And that's them out of the oven. So I just wanted to give you a close-up. I got a couple of pictures and little clips. So you can keep taking a cute look at it. I'm also going to show you in one second how the bread came out, the pan dulce. Oh my God, I was truly impressed with this recipe. And I feel like it was super easy. It does take a lot of time. But I think it's super worth it. And I feel like your family will be super impressed. So take a look at them. I'm not sure if I overbaked them. But they were really soft enough to stay out for like at least like four hours. Um, I did find that if you don't cover them in saran wrap or put them in a Ziploc bag, they will get hard. So just letting you know now, if you're going to make these, make sure that you have an airtight container to keep them fresh and soft but look at how beautiful like my favorite part is the little pieces of cinnamon that you can see in the uh pan dulce and i was taking a bite oh my god I, I was so in love i made me a nice cup of coffee 
Um, my son had about two or three and my husband had, I think he only had one. Um, he's pretty new to the pan dulce, but my son, he is obsessed with everything that I make. So he's going to always indulge, you know, so I tried to limit it, but he, he couldn't help himself because the colors, the shapes, this was so pretty. And I feel like if you have kids, they are going to love to make the shapes and, you know, put the sugar paste together and maybe color the paste with you. So this is a recipe you can do with your family. And I hope you you guys come back for newer recipes. I love y'all so much. Make sure y'all subscribe. Bye.